Hey YouTube, Reclaimer with 2XP Gaming, Captain Jock behind the camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was that was eerily sexy. <laughs> so we're going to be going over our next noobs video, and this is going to be a bulky one, but this is going to be a good one. We're going to be building a new computer, a new gaming rig for Captain Jock. We mm -hmm. are going to be building this thing pretty much from scratch. We did salvage a couple parts from his old build, but a lot of the components that you see here, these are all, actually all these components that you see here are all brand new. So we're going to be showing you how to build your own gaming computer. Uh, it's going to be a rather long video, so I'm just warning you now, but I think it's going to be definitely worth watching this. I'm going to actually add in chapters, which we can do on YouTube, so you can skip to the specific parts. So if you want to see, you know, installing a motherboard and you don't give a crap about, you know, how to install a hard drive, you know how to do that, and then you're set. I'm just going to lay out some of these things real quick, and then we're going to get started. We have a Cooler Master Stormtrooper case. I have this same case for my computer. I swear by it. This is, in my opinion, one of the best ATX cases on the market. Um, definitely look it up if you want to get a nice new case. This thing is sweet. We're using um, an MSI Z87 chipset. Uh, so this is a Z87 GD65 gaming motherboard. We have an Intel Core i7 processor, and I believe this is the 4770K. Uh, we have an OCZ 850 watt ZX power supply. I'm just looking over here, peering over. We have uh, our two terabyte Western Digital hard drive. We're going to be having more than just one hard drive in this build, but just showing you what we got new. The EVGA GTX 780 reference card. And we have some Kingston HyperX Beast RAM running at 2133 megahertz. How much RAM do we have here, Jack? 16. 16 gigabytes. I remember him saying something about getting 16 gigabytes as a fool's choice. Hmm. That being said, let's go ahead. We're going to get into building this computer. Stay, uh, stand by. We're going to have some really fun times building this computer. Look for the Easter eggs and you'll know why we're having fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to be starting off this video with prepping the motherboard for install. Uh, some computer build videos that you see, they're going to be prepping the case first. We kind of did that earlier, but we, we did save time, so we will tell you why in a bit. But um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to prep the mother we're going to prep the motherboard for install. So we're going to install our Core i7 uh, CPU in. We're going to apply thermal paste. We're going to be applying the um, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo fan heat sink. Um, which we already prepped for a little bit by installing the back plate on here because that's just a pain in the butt. We didn't want to put that in the video. But um, Additionally, we're going to install our RAM, and then the motherboard will pretty much be prepped where we can pop it into the uh, computer. So that's where we're going to start is we're going to be prepping the motherboard. Now, you're going to notice that this has an anti-static bag. This came in. A, a decent amount of computer components are subject to... Uh, anti-static discharge and what could end up happening is it could you know fry or some of your components and cause them not to work properly or not work at all so anytime you're handling something that is susceptible to static such as the motherboard the CPU your graphics card your RAM things along those lines you want to make sure that you're keeping them around an anti-static bag if it came with it along with using an anti-static wrist strap which I have here which are properly grounded and all that fun thing stuff so I'm going to go ahead and put this down on the anti-static bag that we're going to be working with and we're going to go ahead and prep our CPU. So this is the Intel Core i7-4770K, really nice processor. And we're just going to cut her open over here. All right, now, the 4770K is going to come with the processor itself, which is up here, and the stock heat sink. I do not recommend using the stock heat sink for a gaming computer. If you're just using it for a you know basic run-of-the-mill type machine, the stock heat sink is fine. It already has thermal paste applied to it. However, i7s in general, even if you're using it for a basic computer, if you're going to have an i7 on a basic computer, it's probably not that basic. I would not use the stock heat sink. It just doesn't work as well. There's also documentation, and it looks like this also comes with a, a free trial of McAfee something or other. Yippee. So... What we're interested in for today's video, as soon as my sausage fingers, let's get out of here. The processor. Ooh. So there's your Intel 4770K processor. This little thing here is what costs all the money. I'm just going to lay that there for now. 
put the heat sink back in the box. We don't need that right now. Okay, so most motherboards, if not all motherboards, are going to be coming with a pin protector or a socket protector uh, to protect the pins in the socket. Uh, you've got to be really, really careful with these because you can bend a pin pretty easily and your CPU is not going to work, your motherboard's damaged, that's the end of it. So um, keep this on at all times until you're ready to get rid of the processor. Uh, now this is a socket L, uh, LGA1156, uh, I believe. So basically it has this nice little uh, retention arm here that I'm going to go ahead and unlock. Okay, and that exposes the pins. So, what we're going to do, making sure we're properly grounded, we're going to take the CPU out. Now notice, the CPU should only really go in one way. There's a nice little gold um, circle here on the corner of the CPU. We're going to align that with the socket. So I'm going to try getting this in here as good as I can. All right, I don't know if the camera will zoom in at all on this, but notice how there are two little detents in the socket. That's where the CPU fits, okay? What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take this uh, cover, the socket cover, I'm gonna bring this down so the lip is underneath this little screw. I'm gonna take my retention arm down here. I'm gonna hold this and it does take a little bit of pressure and there I just locked it back this nice thing pops off whatever motherboard you get make sure you keep this in the box if you ever have to return your motherboards for service you need to have this in there otherwise it's going to be void warranty just an FYI usually what I like to do is I like to put this with the CPU in the box so you never forget it so I'm just going to keep this with the CPU box we'll have that for later all right so our CPU is installed in the motherboard the most expensive pieces, except for the graphics card, are already installed. So that's a nice quick thing. Now we're going to talk about thermal paste. Thermal paste is always needed when you're using some type of uh, heat sink and fan cooling. Now I showed you that the heat sink that came with the i7 has its own thermal paste. It's not good stuff. Uh, additionally, the aftermarket coolers that you get, like this Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo Plus, comes with thermal paste as well. Not the best, I mean it's definitely better than the Intel stock stuff. I always use and recommend Arctic Silver 5, really good thermal paste. On Newegg or eBay or Amazon, not only can you get it with just the thermal paste, but you also get the cleaning and prep kit. This I won't be using, but I'm just here showing you this, it comes with a prep kit if you have old thermal paste that you need to get rid of. This stuff is gold. It's like liquid gold, even though it looks like, like old people poop. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pause the video and we're going to prep our heat sink and then I'm going to show you how to apply this and then applying the heat sink. All right, so now we're going to be applying our Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste. Go on their website for the recommended application uh, for uh, you know your different processor. For Intel Core i5s and i7s, they recommend just going in a straight line. You don't want to over apply the thermal paste, but you want to put enough on so that it coats it. Thermal paste does take a couple hours of use, a couple days even, to break in. So you're probably going to notice that your CPU is running a little hot for the first couple days, and then after that it kind of just breaks in and settles. You probably do need to reapply thermal paste every once in a while, maybe every year, year and a half, what have you. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead here, try and do this without messing it up. All right, so that's our thermal paste. I'm hoping I didn't, one time I applied thermal paste so much, too much, that it actually stopped the computer from working. Uh, it actually overheated. Uh, and we wanna make sure that it doesn't kind of flop down into these crevasses here and get into the, uh, the socket. So we're gonna apply even pressure. Now we're gonna take our heat sink. Any heat sink that you have will work. This is a big heat sink, but any heat sink that you'll have will work. But basically what we're gonna do with this is we're going to apply um, even pressure down on the CPU so that the thermal paste sits. And then with this particular heat sink, we have a bracket that we have to install. So I'm going to try and do this in the best movement possible. It's not as hard as, it's just not as easy as it looks, but all right, there we go. 
should be good. Okay, I'm just gonna take my bracket here and I have to slide this in if it will be so kind. Okay. All right, so we finally got this installed. Probably should have had the fan off when I first did it, but basically now we're just screwing in, screwing these in so that we, we have it nice and flush and that everything's nice and secure. I will say there are much better videos if you want to install Hyper 212 Evo Plus. That is not the purpose of this video. So if you do need some help installing a Hyper 212 Evo Plus, YouTube has great resources. All right, this thing is on nice and secure. So this is gonna be a nice little heat sink that we have set up. Now, some of you like to do the whole um, liquid cooling. That's totally cool, uh, that's totally fine. Um, I'm not too familiar with liquid cooling. Maybe someday I should get familiar with it, but um, I, a lot of like the, the forced air heat sink type deals, you're gonna cool uh, I7 just fine with it, so no issues. Um, we're just gonna put the fan back on here. Let's see, are you gonna use another fan on this thing or no? Maybe. Yeah. All right, then I'm just gonna install this under. So make sure no matter what cooler you use, you install the fan on the appropriate fan header on the motherboard. And I just wanna make sure we're aligning the fan properly here. Maybe I'll actually install the, <laughs> maybe I'll install the fan before I put it on the header. How about we do that? It's not an exact science. Now we'll put this on the header. All right, yay. All right, so we have our heat sink installed uh, for this i7, for 770K. Now we're gonna do the RAM. RAM. Now, whenever you're getting RAM, please check and make sure that your motherboard uh, supports the RAM that you're getting. You can do that through the QVL, the Qualified Vendors List online. Uh, you also want to find out what area of the motherboard you want to install your DIMMs. So if I take a look here, this is going to be interesting because this fan actually might get in the way of our RAM DIMM. So what I may have to do is take this fan off of this side and move it over here so it doesn't get in the way of our RAM. You can get low profile RAM, um, you know, if, you're, if you want to run two fans on a, a heat sink such as this. I am going to definitely have to move this because it's going to get in the way of our RAM. That, ooh, fancy. All right, so most RAM configurations, we're gonna do DIM2, well, this particular motherboard is gonna be DIM2 and DIM4 first. RAM only goes in one way. You're gonna unlock it on the motherboard. You're gonna align the slot. And you're just gonna push down, applying even pressure until you hear it click. We're going to go ahead and do that for our second area here. All right, our RAM is installed. Look how simple and easy that was. Now, the motherboard is pretty much prepped for install. Keep in mind, there's a lot more to do yet. We're going to have to install all our different SATA drives in here. We're going to have to install our power. We're going to have to uh, install the headers here for the front of the case. We're going to have to install our graphics cards. There's a lot to do yet. But I always like to get the motherboard prepped because who wants to be working inside of the case with you know, all these crazy small things. So I'm going to go ahead and install the fan back on the heat sink in an opposite fashion. Then we're going to prep the case.
All right, so now we're gonna be prepping our case. Um, so what we need to do first, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of cable management and stuff we need to do later, but first thing we need to do is install the standoffs for the motherboard. Standoffs are these little things here. They have like a nice little stubby end here. If you're lucky, your case will come with an adapter that all you have to do is put it on and use a Phillips head screwdriver. This particular case tells you what type of standoffs uh, positioning you need to use based off of the type of motherboard you're using. So we're using an ATX motherboard, so it tells us where to put our standoffs in. So all we're gonna do, and I'm gonna not show you all of this, but basically we're just gonna go in and we're gonna install our standoffs. So they sit in there nice and, and flush and tight because this is what the motherboard is going to be screwed uh, into. So we want to make sure that we're positioning it right. You got to be really careful with standoffs because if you install a standoff in the wrong place and it contacts the uh, back of the motherboard, it could lead to a short. So don't just go and install standoffs all willy-nilly because that's just not going to fly. So this adapter is not really helping me too much right now. I probably could have done this by hand, but we're doing it the right way for you, the viewer. So we're going to be installing our OCZ ZX series as an 850 watt modular power supply. A um, couple schools of thought on this. Uh, I usually install the power supply with the fan facing down. Uh, what's nice about this Stormtrooper is it has vented uh, part of the case here with an air filter, which is really nice. So that's usually why I like to install it in a down facing position. Um, this is obviously going to go out so you can plug your computer in. This is where your modular connections are going to be. Your power supply will usually come with screws. They could be thumb screws like this, which are really nice, or uh, it could come with, or your case can come with uh, actual screws that you're going to put in. So you just want to make sure you align this in with your case. And you're going to slide that in so it fits all nice. And you're going to go to your back of your case, which you're not going to see here, but you get the gist. You're going to go ahead and line up the holes. And you are going to install, once I can get this situated here, you're going to go ahead and start installing your power supply. I do, I do like that this comes with uh, thumb screws. I mean, I don't know anybody that would, um, you know need to take their power supply out really quick. But I guess if you wanted to take your power supply out and you were in a hassle or a rush, I guess, why not? Thank you, OCZ, for the flexibility. All right, and last one right here. Now you will see some people put the power supply in after the motherboard. I'm just, I've never had success with that. All right, power supply's in. That's all nice and pretty. Now, trial and error time, <laughs> depending on the motherboard and everything else. Usually the next step for me is to install the motherboard. So when I do that from time to time, depending on the case and all the components that I'm using, sometimes it works great and I can get in there and do everything that I need. And other times I have to take the motherboard back out. So I can tell you from my build, I was able to just install the motherboard right on the standoffs and then do the rest of my work with the motherboard in the computer. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so before you install the motherboard, you need to in install your IO shield. This comes with your motherboard. Uh, this is usually pretty easy. You're gonna, yeah, there's like these little rivets here, rib for your pleasure and your cases. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna sick. put, uh, I am sick. Uh, you're gonna put this in here in the back and you're just gonna push, push. Okay, now there you go and sometimes it installs kind of flimsy. But once you have the motherboard up against it, not an issue. Alrighty, so now we've installed all of our standoffs. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the motherboard. All right, so we installed the motherboard after the break, so we just basically put in uh, screws where all our standoffs were, made sure they were nice and hand tight. Now the motherboard's nice and uh, installed, so we're not going to have this going anywhere. Since we have everything in here, um, and before we get into like adding the power and the cable management, we're just going to throw the graphics card in right now. So we're going to throw in this nice, beautiful GTX 780. Uh, this thing looks awesome as hell. 
Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to line this up with the PCI Express slot. We're going to make sure that we have it open. Keep in mind when you get graphics cards, check the length of the graphics card and how much the case clearance is before you get the card. Um, this thing is pretty darn long. So uh, all we're going to do is we're going to make sure it goes in here. We're going to line it up with the port. We're just going to apply even pressure so you hear it click in. That's the end of it. Depending on the case that you have, you will install thumb screws or, or something along those lines just to make sure that it's in securely. So that's what I'm going to do now. You might have to apply a little forward pressure. Okay. All right, yeah, so now we've got the nice uh, GTX 780 installed, looking really good, taking up a nice big space on the motherboard, but it's making things look really nice, so that's going to be great. All right, so we've got the CPU installed, the RAM installed, the graphics card installed. We haven't done any of the optical or hard drives yet. Next thing we're going to do, uh, which is sometimes the most tedious part, is installing our power cables and hooking up our headers and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up some of the, the front port headers um, to the motherboard. So usually on a computer you're going to have a whole bunch of different ports on the front, USB, um, M SATA, things like that. Well they have to come from somewhere and that comes through all these nice big cables. Uh, and again, like I said, this is sometimes the most tedious part because you got to find out where everything matches. You can read your motherboard manual for that. Uh, and, and all along when you're going through this, you want to definitely keep cable management in mind. So when you see dumb things that you don't really think you need right now, try and keep them out of the way as much as possible and try and imagine you know, where they're going to be going in the case. A lot of the, these cables I'm getting rid of right now are fan cables. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm just hooking in some of these header extenders to the motherboard. Although this one I don't think we need. It's not as secure as I'd like it, so I'm going to leave that out actually. Uh, but you're going to see a whole bunch of different types of things, so consult your motherboard and your case manual for what you need. For example, this thick cable here is your USB 3.0 for your front ports. So we're going to find wherever that goes. And again, we're trying to keep cable management in mind. So we want to get all these cables unbunched so we have a nice, nice way of going about this. But it's a lot easier said than done. And you don't have to get as, you know, tedious with, with this as I am. I just like to have a nice cable managed case as, as much as possible and you're going to want to find the front USB header which just happens to be <laughs> underneath the video card we just installed so I'm going to go ahead and make sure we have this lined up properly and we're going to install this probably you're not going to probably see this very good on the video and that's okay just again remember to um, consult your motherboard and case manual all right, so that's installed. We'll cable manage that out of the way in a little bit. Uh, this particular case has an X dock on, X dock on the front where you can hot um, plug in a solid state drive. Uh, so because of that, it comes with a SATA connector. And we're gonna go ahead and just use one of these plentiful SATA ports. I'm just gonna happen to use SATA 6 port. Or say to five, doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. Okay. And what else do we have here? For some reason they want us to hook this Molex power in. I'll do that later, I guess. Probably for fan. That's definitely for a fan. And this is definitely for fans. biggest pains in the butt. Okay. 
All right, let's see what we can get here. These are some front jumpers. This one here is for power switch and for the hard drive activity LED. So we're going to find where that is on the motherboard. We're going to go ahead and hook them in. To be quite honest, I don't really care for these um, spacers that come with this particular motherboard. They don't seem to be too good when it comes to having nice steady connections, so I'm actually not going to use them. But you can definitely use those if you want more space ever, so keep that in mind. are in. What else do we got? HD audio or AC97. You can use either or. Most of my other motherboards support high definition audio so you want to find that header and plug that in. We just have to find it. I probably could have you know done this with just looking at the motherboard manual but who does that? Looks like this is our audio right here, so we're going to wrap this around the power supply, or I'm sorry, the... Hmm. I'm actually going to hook that one up later. I'm going to bring that in through, through down here. That'll probably be easier. And then we have, it looks like, more USB. So we're going to find one of our USB headers here. Alright, so those are the bulk of the front headers um, for the for the switches and everything like that. Um, your case may have more, your motherboard may have less. Most modern motherboards are going to have spots for hard drive activity, power switch, reset switch, things like that. Um, I'm going to do a lot of the cable management off the video, but we'll show you what the finished product looks like. And then it's actually what we're going to do now is we're going to start doing some cable management for some of these cables. And then we're going to start installing the power cables as well, which is also another tedious part. Okay. So we have a modular power supply here, and what we did was we had to we hooked up the most important connectors first: uh, the motherboard power, the CPU power, and the PCIe Express power. This is what's going to be used to power your graphics card. Um, cable manage all throughout as best as you can. But you need to make sure that these power connectors are in nice and firm because this is what's going to be providing, hopefully, if you have a good power supply, clean power to your CPU. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to plug in this huge cable into the port. <laughs> so you have to see how it matches up and that's what I'm trying to do right now. Okay, found it. So it only goes in one way and it is a pain to get out. And it's a pain to get in sometimes too. Let me just get up so I can give myself a little force here. Now obviously if it doesn't fit, don't force it. All right, perfect. So that fit, and that's a very thick cable, so that's probably honestly the best we're gonna get that cable managed out of the way, and that's fine. Now, the eight pin CPU header. A lot of power supplies are notorious for not having long CPU headers, because it's gotta go all the way from the bottom of the power supply all the way up to the top corner of the motherboard. Luckily, uh, Corsair, or I'm sorry, Cooler Master knew that this was going to happen, so they included a nice extension cord. This also fits one way, and I'm just making sure that the way I put it in here is going to fit. And it looks like that's it, so we're going to go ahead and put this in as well. There we go, we hear a nice click, and we'll cable manage that out of the way later, make it look nice and clean. Your PCIe's, now depending on your card, you might use a six pin, you might use an eight pin. A lot of power supplies have different PCIe's. So for example, 
This particular one could be 6-pin or it could be an 8-pin. This one here is just a true 8-pin or you could again do a 6-pin, right? So what you're going to end up doing here, and I'm not going to plug these in just yet because we have some other things to cable manage, but then you're just going to plug these in and that's going to give you your power for your graphics card. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hook up some more power supplies um, sections. We're going to hook up some of the Molex connectors and some of the SATA connectors. And we're going to route those to where we think we're going to put our drives. All right, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at installing hard drives. Now, depending on your case, you might have a nice hard drive tray um, or cage where you can put in multiple drives, or you might just not have the cage and you'll slide them right into the, the uh, case itself. But this particular case uses a cage system. So I took the cage out and we have the fan mounted the way that we want it mounted. We're going to take our hard drives here. This is a Western digi uh, Digital two t uh, 1 terabyte. This is the OS disk. And we're just going to slide it into the cage. And it clicks in as so. We're going to take our 2 terabyte hard drive, which is more for our storage, and we're going to slide that into an alternate position on the cage. All right. Okay. So we have our hard drives installed in here. As you can see, we could probably put in another one, uh, which is kind of cool. There's two of these cages in this particular case. So uh, what's nice is this is toolless, so you might see it you know, jiggle maybe a little bit, but it's not going to come out. Um, and then we can slide this into the case as such. And then I can get, uh, I'll take my screws here and I'll actually put this in. So now all I have to do then if I ever want to take these drives out is turn the thumb screws out and we can get access to our hard drives, you know, if we want to replace them. All right, so if you have an optical drive, some people don't get, do them anymore, but I always like to have an optical drive in case I have a, a you know a disc I want to burn or something like that. Uh, really simple. Most cases, just slide it on in. So we're going to line it up with the top for, for this particular build. And we get the holes to align, and then we'll just need to use some screws, and we'll put that in as well. Um, so now what we're going to do, now we have all our drives installed, is we're going to hook up our SATA cables. These usually will come with the motherboard. They only fit one way, which is really nice. Uh, there are different types of SATA cables, SATA 6 and SATA 3, uh, which, is all, which will allow for 3 or 6 gigabits a second. Um, definitely try going with SATA 6 if you can. And all you need to do is plug it into the device. So I'm going to find the SATA port here. Make sure it fits. You know, plug it in, you'll hear that nice snap, and I'm just going to route this through the back so then when we cable manage later, we'll be able to go ahead and uh, get it down here to the SATA connectors. You definitely want to make sure that you're, um, if you end up getting a solid state drive, that you're, and even if you're not getting a solid state drive, uh, if your motherboard uses the Marvell chipset for SATA, I don't recommend it, it's slower. Um, definitely use Intel chipset um, SATA ports, which almost all Intel supporting motherboards use. To be quite honest, I can probably plug this one in just right from there and we'll kick the manage out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're gonna recap what we did during the break. We didn't film a lot because who wants to watch cable management? So Basically, we're going to give you a recap of what we did. So we built a brand new computer out of new components. We installed our Intel CPU into the socket on the motherboard, placed the heat sink on it, placed the RAM in the motherboard, and placed the motherboard in the case. We then installed the graphics card, the power supply. We added some of the nice power cables that you see here. We added in two regular hard drives and an optical drive. We added the SATA cables and the power cables for that. Um, we then went ahead and cable managed the back panel of the case, which we didn't show you because that's a pretty time consuming and that's going to be based off your preference. So when you're building a computer, you want to try and get the cleanest case possible. This is fairly clean based off of all the wires. Could we have done a better job? Yeah, a little bit, but I think this is a pretty darn clean case. Um, the last thing we did was we hooked up the fan connectors and everything along those lines. Now, before you actually close up the case, you want to see if it actually powers on. 
Now it's probably not going to work right off the box because one, we don't have a monitor connected, two, we don't have a keyboard connected, and three, we have to go in the BIOS and program a few things. But all I like to do before closing this up for the time being is just hit the power switch and hopefully it works. Let me just turn the power on. We do have a light on the motherboard, which is a good thing. Let's take a look here. All right, graphics card is lighting up. I've got one, two fans spinning. I have the two fans in the front not spinning, which we will have to address. But it looks like the computer is running, which is a good thing. So troubleshoot what you need to troubleshoot. This is why I always like to do this test. I like to check to make sure the fans are working and everything else. But as long as everything's working, then you're going to hook it up to your monitor, which we're going to do next. And we're going to go into BIOS to make sure everything works okay. So let's fix these fans. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so we got that fixed. It was just a, a Molex connector that didn't want to stay in when we closed the case up. So this computer, uh, all the fans are spinning. We're not getting any error codes when we're booting up, which is a good thing. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to close it up and we're going to head into software. So when we get into the software portion of it, this is going to be a little different than what you may run into with a brand new hard drive without Windows installed. Now, this we're using a hard drive that already had Windows 7 installed, but it was on completely different hardware. So we may run into some driver issues. Um, I'm going to tell you right now my recommendation, if you have the time and you have the copy of Windows, um, do a clean install because you're going to avoid driver problems. Now, I can tell you when I switched from my old hard drives, to the new uh, computer that I built, I had no problems. I just had to reinstall some graphics drivers and that was it. But if you have the time, the proper way of doing it is to do a clean wipe on your hard drive. But if you have a brand new hard drive, make sure you have a new copy of Windows or whatever you're installing on your computer and you're going to have to install that first after you do fix any issues in BIOS or in post. All right, so we're going to try powering this on for the first time. We'll see how things go. Okay, great. We are going to go into BIOS. Nice UEFI BIOS here. I like this. Look at that. Look how pretty. Now, you're going to have to look at your motherboard's manual, know what hardware you installed. Um, and for this, we have to look at uh, the RAM, for example. The RAM is currently timed at 1333 megahertz. The RAM that uh, Captain Jock has is 2133 uh, megahertz. So we're going to go in here. Let's go into advanced. And I've got to play through my settings here. Start. We don't need that right now. USB, Super IO, Smart Connection, Power Management Setup. We're okay here for now. Go see. Here we go. Extreme Memory Profile. We're going to go to Profile 1, and that's going to give me 2133 MHz. Great. Uh, boot Device Priority. We're going to do Hard Disk 1, and let's see. Let's see if we can save configurations and reset. We'll make sure that we have the that it's booting into the right hard drive. That's fine because we shut this off earlier. So we're just going to start Windows normally. It's a good sign so far. Right now the computer is probably thinking like, what the hell hardware, see we're going to run into some issues here with, um... I like how I know his password by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it, it, it's running a totally different graphics card than what he had before, he had a, you know, an ATI based card. So, you have totally different graphics drivers, totally different network drivers, so there's going to be a lot out of the box that will not work. If you have a brand new hard drive, you're going to have to do a lot of different stuff here. Um, so one of the biggest things, Windows is going to start like trying to like do all this crazy stuff and up update hard drives and stuff like that. 
So one of the things that I like to do is I do like to see what's included on the disc. Keep in mind some of these drivers may be out of date. But you just want to kind of pop in the disc anyway. Because it's different. Um, a good question would be if you're moving over uh, to uh, you know a new computer or something else. If you don't have internet, probably because the driver is not installed yet for the network interface card or the NIC. So that's why we pop in the disk so we can get some uh, drivers so we can get connectivity. But yeah, so the computer's working. Now it's just software issues. So you can get latest drivers from the manufacturer's website. Windows Update, which I'm not a huge fan of, but you can get it from Windows Update if need be. Um, you're going to need to tinker around, make sure you get the latest and greatest software on here, make sure you get virus scanning on and all the good things that you need, malware, uh, you know, defense, all those good stuff. Uh, but other than that, that's really the build. So we went through building a new computer basically from scratch and it's up and running. We just got to do some software things. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, I did say it was going to be a little bit of a longer one, even with the editing. It was, you know, definitely a long video, but you get an idea of what it takes to build a gaming PC and hopefully you found that it's not that hard. It just takes a little time and you need to, you know, read the manuals and know what you're doing. Uh, so that being said, hope you know, like what you, if you like what you saw, please feel free to like the video, share it, comment, or subscribe to us. That would be great. Uh, leave us a, a message on Twitter. If you have any questions or, you know, suggestions for video, leave us a comment there. But if not, this is Reclaimer with 2XP Gaming. We'll see you next time. Rainbow, full on. I had to take a break. Yeah. You know it's important when it gets us away from building a computer. How much will do that, but a double rainbow certainly will. All right.